Today's topic is measuring inflation and unemployment. But today's focus, basically, is going to be on inflation, deflation, and disinflation. So, what is inflation? Inflation is a persistent rise in the prices of goods and services in an economy. That means prices continue to rise within, within an economy. Deflation is not a bad thing because without inflation, without inflation, businesses will not be able to make profits. But what we are talking about is inflation that exceeds two percent. So between one point five percent and two percent is still fine. But anything above it becomes a problem for the economy. So if prices continue to rise in an economy, this is what inflation is about. So not. Businesses will not make profit if they don't inflate the price they sell, they sell their products. So, inflation is part of what will make our business to make profit. But what we are saying is, what kind of inflation occurs within an economy? So, here is inflation. I said it is a persistent rise in the price of goods and services in an economy, and the prices price continue to rise in an economy that is inflation. Then we have disinflation. So, what is disinflation? Disinflation means that the inflation rate starts you know, slowing down. That means the, the inflation rate starts falling. So from maybe 7%, it starts, becomes 5%, it becomes 4%. This is what this inflation is about. So what is this inflation? The fall in the inflation rate, that is this inflation. Then we have deflation. For deflation, it means a fall in the general price level within an economy. That is deflation. Inflation is a percentage rise in the price of goods and services in an economy. This inflation means that the inflation rate starts falling from 10% to 5% to 6% or to 3% and so on. Then we have hyperinflation. When we talk about hyperinflation, it means the inflation rate is so high that it's hyperinflation. I wrote here, it defines to a very high inflation rate within an economy. This could range from 50% or above. So it is hyperinflation when the inflation rate is 50% and above. That is hyperinflation. Inflation consistent rise in the price of goods and services. This inflation, this inflation means that the inflation rate starts falling. Then we have deflation, which is a fall in the general price level within an economy. We have hyperinflation, which means the inflation rate is so high, like 50% and above. Then we we'll go to relationship between GDP and inflation rate. So when we talk about GDP, note GDP is what? The, the measurement of a country's output. The measurement of a country's output is as national income. So I wrote here, the rise in the GDP following, following recession is called reflation. So what is reflation? Reflation means that the GDP of a country is increasing following a, uh, following a recession. What is recession? Recession means that there's a decline, there's a negative economic growth for two consecutive quarters. That means for a whole year, there's a decline in the economic activity. That is recession. So if there is decline in economic activity, and at the same time, the GDP of such country is increasing, we call it reflation. The situation is called reflation. Then we have, then I said, inflation which occurs during recession is known as stagflation. There's recession in an economy, and at the same time, inflation, continue, inflation also exists in such economy. If that happens, that means the economy will be stagnant. So if the economy is stagnant, we call it what? Stagflation. So stagflation means an increase in the inflation rate during the recession period. Then we have reflation, which means an increase in the GDP of a country following recession. Then we have the measuring of measuring inflation using CPI. The CPI is a consumer price index. So here I go. Consumer price index is a, is a measure of the price level and inflation. So the CPI attempts to calculate the amount of money or it measures the amount of money available or that an individual or a household need to buy the same basket of goods at this present time with, with the previous year. So I wrote, the CPI attempts to calculate the amount of money a household need to buy the basket of goods at the same time in the previous year. So the amount of money you need now to buy the same quantity of goods with that of the previous year is what we call, is what we use CPI to do. Thank you. So for the next class, we're going to talk about how we measure our inflation using CPI.